afternoon. I am Mr. Hendricks, and I'm giving you a little introduction to AP literature and composition. Uh, I realize this is a little funky, and that's probably how a lot of the school year is going to feel. Hopefully, we'll be back at some point. Um, bear with us, and uh, we will do our best to bear with your own tech issues you may have. Um, so this is AP Literature and Composition. The easiest way to think about this is sort of the fiction equivalent of AP Lang. Uh, AP Lang would look at, hey, uh, what the literary techniques does MLK Jr. use to convince his audience to adopt his views on racism? Whereas AP Lit looks at a story, goes, hey, in The Invisible Man, what literary techniques does Ralph Ellison use to encourage his audience to think about his views on racism? Um, in this way, they are very similar. Uh, I sometimes encourage students to think of AP Lang as nonfiction and AP Lit as fiction. There's a, it's, it's not the worst way to think of it. Uh, our content will do around 20 timed essays, at least. Uh, basically just as practice. Uh, two to three longer essays. We'll need to review the rhetorical analysis tools, which if you have a good memory and you did well in laying on them, will be pretty easy. If you either forgot them or took M lit, it's going to take a little bit more time. Uh, we're also going to read a wide survey of literary works from the 17th to 21st century in both poetry and prose. This is conversely, if you took Hamlet, you've got a good jump up here because you've already read The Crucible, you've read Gatsby, you've talked about a little more about sort of themes of literary works. So basically this one's gonna be easier if you took Lang last year, this one's gonna be easier if you took Hamlet last year. Uh, we're gonna talk about critical theory, which is one of those things that students either love or hate or try to quickly burn out of their brains. Uh, and we'll also talk about different literary movements. Um, you are probably familiar with this. Um, if, you're take, if you're taking your absolute first AP class as a senior, you've never taken one before and this is it, congratulations, that's awesome. I'm super impressed that you decided to take that leap. Um, but generally, you're probably aware of how this works. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're super excited about this, that, you can slow this down. Um, it will take AP exams at the end of the course. I would assume that the College Board is working on slightly more comprehensive versions of the test. For AP Lang, or AP Lit and Lang are actually, those tests are formatted very similar. You have one hour for a 55 multiple choice question, and then you have two hours to write three essays. Now this last year, they, because they did it online, they basically just gave students, I believe it was 50 minutes to write one essay. Uh, it was a very different format. Usually everybody answers the same prompt, but with the online version, they had, I think it was something like 50 prompts. They had a ton of prompts. Um, and they just, everybody got a different one, basically. I would assume that they are going to push more to try to get the full test experience going again now that they have a little more time to prepare, but I'm, I'm really not positive if they're going to be able to do that. So long story short, I don't know what the AP test is going to look like at the end of the year. Uh, I would definitely, if we've got like a vaccine or we get a handle on uh, COVID, and to the point where we can do testing, then it'll be the standard test. Uh, it might just be the 50 minute one essay, uh, or it could be some mix of that. Um, yeah, college's acceptance as credit, or sometimes it's class placement, depends on the college, you'll need to look at where you're planning on applying. Um, and it saves you a bunch of money, particularly if you've been taking a lot of these. If you show up and you're basically already a sophomore, which we have had students do, um, that saves you about a year worth of tuition, which is lovely. 
Um, yeah, moving to upper level plasma center, all that kind of stuff. Um, I took like a level three, like a basically a junior level class my freshman year because my AP test scores were good and they said, yeah, you can go ahead and start taking some of those upper level classes. Um, again, if you've taken an AP class before, none of this should be news. Um, and if you haven't, feel free to pause this video and read it. This is I haven't updated the dates yet either. I don't even know if they've released the dates. It's all, like I said, it's, it's going to be interesting. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the format because the essays are definitely different from the AP Lang version. So the multiple choice is hey on all the stuff we've covered throughout class. Uh, and then the essays, one of them is hey, here's a poem. Tell us what's really going on in this poem. The other one is a prose, usually a segment from a short story that says, hey, here's the scene. Talk about how the author makes that scene resonate with the readers. What rhetorical devices, what literary techniques, what all are they doing? Um, those are, frankly, kind of the easier ones. Generally, between the poem and the prose, uh, one of those is from a work in the 20th century, uh, which is usually pretty easy to read. And one of those is a work from the pre-20th century, uh, often like 17th, 18th century. And those can be a little tricky. Uh, a few years ago, the, it was a prose story about these two guys getting into a duel, and it was very wordy. And probably about a quarter of the students who did that one on the AP test were confused about who actually won the duel because the grammar was so wordy and used he and him sort of interchangeably. Uh, and it, it, was, it was a little tricky to get what was going on. Uh, the final essay is why we need to do all the reading throughout the year. Uh, and it basically boils down to they give you a theme and then tell you, from your knowledge of literature, write about examples of that. So it might be something like, hey, talk about the importance of siblings in literature. Now write about a classic work of literature that revolves around sibling relationships. Um, and you've got you know 45 minutes to do it. Those can be very tricky if you don't have a pretty good beat on a bunch of stories and novels. Um, even if you do, it can be a little tricky because your brain just goes, I can't think of anything. Um, so we'll be trying to provide enough resources that you can go, oh, that short story, or that play, or that novel. Um, but that's what we'll be looking at. Um, yeah, 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 we still pay most of your fee. Here's all the credit policy. Again, odds are very good that you, this is not your first AP test. If it is, again, please email me, talk to me, talk to counseling or whoever, and we'll, we'll sort of go over this with you. Um, but it, it is it is rare for us to have seniors who are taking their first AP class. Again, if this is, I'm very impressed and awesome, and please hang in there. Just you will have to work hard. Um, but it's also, I think, a good experience to sort of get a beat on some of these concepts that otherwise no one's going to tell you until college. Uh, if you have any questions about this. Please feel free to email me, uh, and I will be happy to answer questions right away. Thank you.